there was really no love lost between Native Americans and the Buffalo soldiers. Those people killed each other. The black soldiers were carrying out U.S. policy, and the U.S. government policy was to remove Native Americans and put them on reservations. It's really important to remember that the Buffalo Soldiers were involved in nearly every aspect of Manifest Destiny. They were involved in the policing for Texas. They were also the ones who would escort our mail services across horrible Indian territorial lines. These must have been some really brave people to go into Comanche territory and set up shop. There is a very high chance you will die. Manifest Destiny was a belief that aims, values, institutions that Americans at that time were holding dear, freedom of religion especially, the ability to own land and to benefit from the fruits of one's own labor, and especially if they're wrapped around a Christian value that says God wants this, you now have Manifest Destiny. Not just these beliefs and values, but also the laws that reinforce them. So if you think of your home, for example, you have a plot of land that goes along with your house. That is land that you have title deed to, and that is yours. It belongs to you. For many people, such as the Pequots, that was not a normal concept. People shared land. You didn't block it off by a field or a fence. And so for Pequots especially, this was really problematic. Their lives were transhuman. They actually planted the land that they lived on a couple of seasons during the year and then went to another area that they had already planted the previous season and reaped the benefits of that. For English settlers and particularly Puritans, this was crazy. That was a sign of savagery. So that was induced by the devil, rather than understanding that this was a way of life for people for thousands of years. This is a blanketing prescription of life without acknowledgement of the lives that they are living. It's also suggesting in many respects that they are all one thing. Victorio was born uh, approximately in the 1820s. He's an individual who rises through his prowess in war to become a chief and very well-respected chief. By 1850, this is a man who's not only seasoned in war, but he's ultimately what many Buffalo soldiers, especially in the Ninth, would come to call probably the greatest Indian military mind in the United States. Between 1850 and 1860, he petitions many times to the federal government. Sometimes they would actually go to Washington. He petitions for a reservation, and those petitions are denied. In 1876, Congress is discussing what to do with the Apache, and it is ultimately decided that they are to be rounded up and all moved to San Carlos. For Victorio, this is just unacceptable. This is a place that's hot. Growing food is nearly impossible. Game are not plentiful. So what they do, he declares war. the Buffalo Soldiers policed the reservations. They were given the order to chase out and find Victoria. So they're not only searching for Victoria, they're patrolling the area and they, they are the guardians. And this is where the Apache rightfully so have contempt against Buffalo Soldiers because of the pursuit by the Ninth, who are actually the guardians of the Arizona border, uh, the New Mexico region as well. They retreat into Mexico as skirmishes become too intense, but also for the Ninth, it sets in their mind the notion that these are individuals who are barriers to peace. We all share something in common. We all want a place where we belong, a place where we have the right to be, a place that makes sense to us. And each of us seek to find a house, seek to establish roots, this is what he was fighting for. Do we not have the same struggle? <laughs>